And the, the, the Gilas uh, scenario and the Gila situation is what it is and they were hurtful they were difficult to handle but you know I, I pride myself on being professional what if boss MVP calls you into his office and asks you Tab do you want to be the head coach of the Gila's team for the World Cup 2023 what will be your answer to boss MVP hi it's YYC athletes with Zeke in this channel, we'll get to know more about your favorite Calgary athletes. Please subscribe! Hi everyone, this is Zeke from YYC Athletes. Today, I am at the Prolific Sports House with one of the best coaches in the world, Coach Thomas Anthony Baldwin. Most people call him Tab Baldwin of the Ateneo de Manila University and the former head coach of the Gilas Pilipinas national team. Coach Tab, welcome to Calgary and how are you feeling? Feeling great. You know, this is such a beautiful city. My first time being here. Uh, it was cold today. I can't believe in July it's cold, but I guess, uh, you know, way up north in Canada. But uh, very, very happy to be here. Very happy to be a part of today's activities and, and seeing so many of the kids from the really the Alberta area and uh, they came in here and you know, they played so hard and you know they, they did their best to show myself and the other coaches the best that they have and I really appreciate them for that effort. Well, for, of course coach we appreciate you coming over here to have some time with the players. You mentioned coach that they did some activities with the kids uh, what have you seen uh, in terms of skills, talents of the players from Alberta? I saw a lot. You know, I saw a lot of kids with a lot of heart, a lot of skill. Uh, they play the game, you know, with typical Pinoy passion. Um, you know, it, it really isn't a lot different than walking in a gym in Manila. Mm -hmm. And, you know, see the kids play the game with so much energy and so much passion. Uh, we didn't have a lot of size here today. Mm -hmm. Uh, which again can be very typical uh, but you know very good basketball players and and kids that have dreams and I think it's important that you know coach Ronald puts this type of activity on and you know we at, at the Ateneo program we're, we're always trying to expand our network of friends that because you just never know where the next you know Matthew Daves or Dwight Ramos is going to come from and uh, it's important that even players that may not be that caliber of player, that we're involved with them and, and they feel that we are interested in them, and we really are. Um, and we're always looking for those diamonds in the rough. Coach, did you see someone here that stood out uh, for you? Well, we never get into the individual personalities. There's a few players here that I think have promise. And, Certainly guys that we will, we will track them mm -hmm. going forward and um, you know hopefully they'll continue to develop and we'll try to offer advice to the local coaches and uh, who knows, you know, uh, we may see one or two of these players in a Blue Eagles uniform in the next couple of years. We'd like to see that definitely. Uh, Coach, you mentioned the Atena de Manila University program. You Coming off uh, a heartbreaking defeat last season, against the UP Fighting Maroons. JD Kagulangan with that you know, game-winning three. Ten seconds to play. UP, 36 years without a title. Is this it? Kagulangan for the championship. Cash money! Uh, you were gracious in defeat though. You gave them credit. Personally coach, from a coaching perspective, what did you learn from that experience? I'm not sure that, that I would say I learned anything. It, it was, you know, in all my 40 years of coaching, it was probably the most incredible playoff series, even single game, uh, that I was ever a part of. And, you know, there's been so much analysis of it, and they, they talk about the amazing shots that the UP players hit. I look at it a little bit differently. I mean, they certainly did hit amazing shots. I see our defensive breakdowns in those same situations. Nonetheless, UP had to make the plays. Coach Goldwyn had to call the right shots. He had to have the right guys on the court. And they had to have been trained properly to, you know, to be in that uh, circumstance. And, and you say that we were gracious in defeat. I, I don't think there's any other option, to be honest. Uh, UP deserved all the accolades. They did the job. They won the championship. 
Uh, we took second. I think we were proud of our effort. We were disappointed in the result. Uh, but it only serves to, you know, add a bit of motivation and fire going forward. I was mostly disappointed for our senior players. Mm -hmm. I thought they did enough mm -hmm. to win the championship, but the reality is, uh, you know, we, we didn't get there. So, um, again, congratulations to Goldwyn and his team and the whole UP University system and alumni. You know, it was a very exciting occasion for them. I wish them well, and I hope we don't. Uh, uh, I hope we don't give them that sort of opportunity again. But I'm sure they're going to be back there. You know, that's a heck of a program now, and um, I think they're the standard bearer right now. So we have work to do to to climb back up there and compete with them. Definitely, coach. Coach, after that game, though, what was your message to your team? I'm sure the seniors were disappointed. They were sad. But what was your message as their head coach, as their father figure sometimes? What was your message to them? Well, you learn from failure. You know, you, uh, and it isn't necessarily always the specific lessons. Um, it's the fact that failure is a part of life. It's a tough part, but it's going to happen over and over and over, you know, in your, in your lives, in your families, in your, your career, in your profession. And, uh, you know, taking it on the chin, acknowledging the victor for, for what they gave to the effort, and, um, and growing from it. Um, that, that's really the only message, but I think our players already knew that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a matter of handling the disappointment and um, feel the sadness, you know, shed the tears, that's okay. But uh, tomorrow the sun comes up, and new opportunities will present themselves, and you have to attack those new opportunities uh, with a greater aggression and a greater sense of purpose than, than what led you to a failure. And I hope that for our graduating seniors, they seem to be doing pretty well in their, in their next steps forward in their career. And those of us that are left behind are trying to build the program back to championship status. Well, as you mentioned, Coach, failure is a part of the process. And also you mentioned, Coach, that you have four seniors graduating uh, last season. You have Gian Mamuya, Tyler Tio, uh, Rafi Verano, and uh, Jolo Mendoza. You also have uh, SJ Belangel uh, depart departing the team, moving on to, South uh, to Korea now. We heard that Ange Kwame hurt his uh, knee during a Gila's training. How's that affecting your preparation for the upcoming uh, UAP season? Well, it's had a dramatic effect on it. Uh, we've had some serious injuries. Dave Defonso has been out for weeks with uh, a knee problem. Um, we had a terrible strike of COVID in our team. You know, our pool of 22 for about a week, week and a half, was down to eight, nine, ten players in training. Everybody else was either out with COVID or close contact. Half of our coaching staff, including me, were out with COVID. Um, so it's been uh, a very, very poor uh, buildup so far. But the ones that are there are working hard, and uh, we will all get back together and get on the court very soon. And um, there's no excuses. I mean, you know, life presents challenges, and this is, this is a series of challenges that we have to figure out a way to overcome. Uh, Anj Kwame will, will be back. He has a partial tear of the ACL. He actually didn't do it in Gila's training. He did it uh, during the season. And he played uh, through the end of the season with uh, you know, a, a knee that was well below uh, normal. And, um, but he's a, he's a warrior. He's a tough guy. But he should be healthy soon, and uh, we just hope it doesn't get any worse. Uh, but again... This is life, you know, and you just have to keep stepping up and, and meeting the challenges as they present themselves. Well, next man up mentality for the Ateneo Blue Eagles this coming season. Coach, switching gears here, I mentioned before this interview, you're always going to be asked about this question no matter where you go. Your relationship with the Gilas Filipinas national team that abruptly and unexpectedly ended earlier this year. Personally, Coach, how do you feel about that? Well, I love the Gila's program. Um, you know, I, I came to the Philippines to be a part of the Gila's program. I've been in the Philippines going into my ninth year now, and seven of those years I've been a part of the Gila's program. 
and it really is the core reason that uh, I came to the Philippines and I've enjoyed every moment with them but you know you don't always get what you want in life and um, I consider myself extremely fortunate to be at Ateneo and to have the opportunities I have at Ateneo uh, and the, the, the Gilas uh, scenario and the Gila situation is what it is and uh, you know I will never go in depth into those issues that arose um, they were hurtful they were difficult to handle but you know I, I pride myself on being professional I could consider myself extremely fortunate to be employed by boss MVP and his group and that carries on through the Ateneo and um, I'm not going to look backwards. I'm just going to look forwards, continue to do my job, and uh, be thankful and grateful for the opportunities that, that this organization, this gentleman, have given me and, and that I've been blessed by uh, the good Lord to, to have these opportunities. Coach, you mentioned uh, both MVP. We all know that the Gilas team is now preparing for the World Cup 2023, which will be hosted by the Philippines, right? What if boss MVP calls you into his office and asks you, Tab, do you want to be the head coach of the Gilas team for the World Cup 2023? What will be your answer to boss MVP? Well, I don't speculate. So, um, you know, if that happens, it happens. And then that bridge will be something that I will look at if and when that happens. But I'm not waiting for that. I'm not expecting that. Um, the Gilas program is, is, and it always was going to go through some tough times building up to the World Cup, and they are experiencing some tough times. But, you know, people have got to get behind. they got to love this team with a passion. Uh, and I'm not part of it now, but I love it with a passion. And, and uh, those players that are in that program, you know, th those are the guys that I, you know, have great affinity for. I've worked with most of them. Uh, I would go to the mat for them tomorrow. Um, and I believe a lot of them would, you know, would go to the mat for me. And I think that's the kind of relationship that you're supposed to build when you're in the, the fire of competition and particularly in a national team. And, you know, I've been in a few national teams. So, you know, all I can say is uh, I don't speculate about what might or might not happen. Um, but that, that team and that organization is very precious to me. That's great to hear, Coach. Even though that relationship has ended, the coaching part of it is ended, and the, the, the personal relationships that you have with your players remain the same, and you're fully supportive of them and the program even now. Lastly, Coach, though, I am a big believer of knowing your why. I'm sure you have many offers from different countries in the world asking you to coach their national team, but why did you choose the Philippines, Coach? Well, it was a great offer when it came along. And, and uh, you know, I was, I was down in New Zealand. And I was, you know, thinking about New Zealand becoming a permanent sort of semi-retirement position down there. And, um, and then the opportunity came along. And because it was international basketball again, I really didn't hesitate. Uh, you know, I love the international game. I think that I have a particular aptitude for international basketball. Um, I've had a lot of success over the years in international basketball. I enjoy the challenge, and for me, coaching has always been about the challenge and helping the players, you know, achieve their dreams. And so it was a pretty easy decision, uh, and that was the why, you know, that was the why. It was, the offer was there to get involved with an international basketball team and guys that I enjoyed working with, so uh, it was a very easy decision, and I don't regret for one second uh, the decision that I made to, to come to the Philippines. And certainly, the Gilas program and the rest of the Filipinos supporting the Gilas program does not and did not the offer that was given to you, Coach, and we really appreciate you and your service to the Filipino basketball community, to, to Gilas. We wish you all the best, Coach. We wish you all the best in the UAP, the upcoming uh, season, season 85. I'm sure the rest of the UAP community is preparing for Ateneo and as you said, the UP fighting Maroons as well. So once again, coach, really appreciate your time today. Really appreciate your time like working with the kids here in uh, Calgary and around Alberta. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, coach, 
Thomas Anthony Baldwin, to coach Tab Baldwin of the Ateneo and the uh, former head coach of the Gilas Filipinas national team. Once again, this is Zeke from YYC Athletes. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the YYC Athletes website and be a part of what's going on here in Alberta.